When most people think of the atom, this is the image that comes to mind, mainly because it is what we are traditionally told the atom looks like. This, however, is not the case. In the next few minutes, we will take a closer look at the atom. We will examine just what it is and give a brief explanation of how atoms function and how they interact. building blocks of the universe. Everything that exists is made up of atoms. Cars, water, air. Even you are made up of billions of atoms. But what is the atom? The word comes from the Greek word atomos, meaning the smallest particle of an element that can exist either alone or in a combination. But what does this tell us about the atom? While the atom is very, very small, the meaning of the word is actually a little deceiving. It was once believed that the atom was the smallest particle, but we have found that the atom is made up of even smaller subatomic particles. Let's look at the three main subatomic particles. They are the proton, neutron, and electron. We'll start in the center of the atom, the nucleus. First, there is the proton. It is positively charged and makes up a significant amount of the weight of the atom. The other part of the nucleus is the neutron. The neutron is a neutral particle, meaning it has no electrical charge. It makes up another significant part of the weight. Circling in varying orbits around the atom are electrons. These are negatively charged particles with very, very, very small mass. They make up only one two thousandth of the weight of either a proton or neutron. Let's see how these particles might look together. Notice how this model differs from the one we saw earlier. And this is important. Instead of individual electrons, we see what seems to be a cloud around nucleus. This is the electron cloud, but it is not like the cloud you see in the sky. It is a representation that shows the probability of finding an electron at any given moment. Since scientists can't see the paths of the electron, they sometimes use this model as a representation. Just as atoms with differing numbers of electrons or neutrons have different properties, when we combine atoms, their properties change. A combination of atoms is called a molecule. Molecules are formed when two or more atoms combine. There are several ways that atoms can combine or bond. We will look at just one of those types, the ionic bond. An ionic bond is a combination of a metal and non-metal. Sometimes atoms need to give up or take electrons to make themselves stable. This is what happens in ionic bonding. We're going to use the combination of sodium and chlorine to demonstrate how an ionic bond works. Chlorine, a non-metal, has seven electrons in its outermost shell. It needs one more to become stable. Sodium, a metal, has only one in its outer shell and is willing to give its electron to chlorine. By forming an ionic bond, both atoms will become stable. When we combine the two, we get sodium chloride. This combination makes up your common table salt. This ionic bonding is just a small part of how atoms interact. So as you can see, the atom is an amazing thing. We've given a microscopic view of what the atom is and how atoms interact. Hopefully, this small amount of information will be helpful to you as your understanding of atoms just begins.